Hi all, welcome to Show Studios Live Review Series. We are about to round up London Women's Wear Autumn Winter 20. Um, I'm Show Studio Fashion Editor Georgie Evans, and this is Show Studio Content Editor Callum Knight. Hi, and we were just saying before the camera turned on that this season, London was good, but eh. <laughs> yeah, has London lost its bite? Yeah. I think London's so renowned for these really boundary pushing shows. And whilst we had really beautiful design and beautiful craft, which us as, us as press would actually put a lot of pressure on, I feel like, mm. to bring that, um, now we're kind of looking for something else, something that has a bit more of a say to it, a kind of point of view, rather than really, really lovely, but at the end of the day, clothes for clothes' sake. Yeah. I think, do you think it's because the threat of London fashion week is felt I mean more so in men's and women's and so everyone as also as you were saying before the camera turned on that everyone is kind of thinking about the brand and actually can this it's all very well being a showstopper and having cake and being interactive or whatever and all the wonderful things that we celebrate about London fashion but actually in I, dire times that's not gonna that's gonna be the first to go I think no one between um, goings on in the UK politically and also kind of the um, possible world health scare we're about to have yeah. people don't really no one knows what's gonna what tomorrow is gonna be like mm. so actually you have to really hedge your bets people don't know whether they can produce in Asia people don't know whether they can sell in Europe or what costs they're gonna have to that so realistically you really need to be carving out a name for yourself and kind of a brand for yourself and make the, in the end, the stores feel safe in investing their money in you because no, they buy, they're going to, the stores will buy things in two weeks in Paris at the showrooms, mm. but actually they don't know what the exchange rate is going to be when they have to pay for them in six months or when customers come over from other stores. These, the political times that we live in, the uncertainty is insane. It's yeah. kind of, it's like the housing market. People really are just so scared, I feel, to... Take a risk. Take a risk, yeah. I think, actually, off the top of my head, Gareth Wrighton's probably the only kind of provoking London, fiery, experimental energy that we really had on this mm. schedule. And, yeah, you're right, I don't think people are in any position to be taking risks on something yeah. like that. And I also I also do think that it is, apart, because we're saying on schedule, there's so much stuff happening around London and in London at the same time, mm. but that's not being brought to the fore, whereas I actually feel that when I speak to journalists who've been doing this longer than I have, that at certain points there have been big, the press give, willing to give time to really young designers and um, support systems for them to be experimental, whereas also the big businesses that kind of have a say in what the schedule looks like aren't prioritising that right now. Mm. And they're looking very much more for um, good business sense at the moment, which... Yeah. Is both are important, but neither should outweigh the other. Yeah, and if we think about some of the brands that normally kind of push the boat out or are exciting, for example, it's Fashion East, it's Charlotte Knowles, Asai was very much missing from the schedule, um, Yuhan Wang, all really strong shows, in my opinion. Great, great clothes, interesting ideas, good presentation, but there wasn't anything pushing over the edge. No. No, and and that's not a disservice to them. They were all really brilliant, but, um, yeah. And then also even into the bigger shows, I mean, another... We had a lot more commercial ideas in these collections, and especially the introduction of small menswear capsules in yeah. women, like brands that have only really shown women wear, women's wear. So we had... Uh, Regina Pio show I think five menswear looks. Molly three or Molly Goddard three or four. Richard Quinn had a few, and again it builds this brand. You know, it's another side of a brand. So actually, you start to see how men will wear this and interact with it. Mm. Whether these will be sold in Paris, I don't know. But um, again, it kind of shows that designers are really trying to be business-minded at this moment. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to just put themselves as, as you say, um, as soon as you introduce menswear into it, you are then that that much bigger of a brand. You are then that much, that much kind of uh, more esteemed on the schedule. People look at you in a different way. You're suddenly uh, automatically shifted up a few pegs <laughs> somehow. Um, yeah, even if it is subconsciously. Um, 
I think all their menswear offerings are actually really successful mm. um, and I was quite pleased to see them especially with the Molly Goddard for me the menswear and Molly Goddard make total sense it was a um, moving away of Molly being the kind of girl gang who have dinner, whiny dinners together mm. and it felt much more of a crew that you wanted to be a part of not that I didn't want to be a part of the girl gang <laughs> <laughs> um, but it just felt it really added something Richard Quinn and Regina Pio nice and excited to see them there but um, I think it is doing less for the brand than it is for Molly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and when we actually get down to the clothes, there's a real level of sophistication. Uh, for a while in London, we had kind of a haphazard, I'm so cool, I did this yesterday, and we've just thrown it together, and there's yeah. kind of that loose, chic, studenty chicness. That is gone from the schedule. The younger designers have really stepped up their game, as we said, and also even in uh, the big design houses, they're really looking to a sophisticated woman um shapes that you would originally or kind of clothing staples we saw the word staples a lot <laughs> clothing staples that you'd associate with an older woman's wardrobe and then trying to be reworked but again starting from this kind of higher higher aesthetic and then trying to bring it down instead of you know taking completely new garments yeah we saw that a lot at christopher kane which is very much his raison d'etre anyway um at erdem at I think we kind of saw it at Simone a little bit. Mm. Um, that idea of kind of refinement, of definitely a Victoria Beckham. Um, it was kind of like a reducing and a sucking and a tightening and a sharpening of the <laughs> line. There's a lot of opera gloves as well this season. It's just, it's about, it's almost going back to that, I want to be a rich, rich old white lady. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it seems like a weird knee-jerk reaction when you saw it in each collection it didn't feel like that but when you start to analyze the collections as a whole yeah you would hope that you would see the fashion industry embracing all em embracing diversity but actually it feels like a slight tightening up again yeah which yeah. is a shame it's a real real shame a actually. little bit we've kind of lost the quirk yeah and and the edge a little bit it's very polished it's it's um, it's it's gone a bit Claridge's. <laughs> it's gone a bit Claridge's, um, which is it's fine. Um, there was quite a lot of tailoring as well. We saw Simone introduce a lot more tailoring this season in her reference to um, the Aran Islands and the Sailors. Um, again, obviously with the men's, where well, there's quite a lot of tailoring of Victoria Beckham as well. JW was all about silhouette this season, mm. which was really beautiful and textures. And actually, I think textures was quite. Um, I mean, it's quite a common trait in women's wear, but this kind of sumptuous texture which again adds to this like richness and kind of higher level that we've been seeing quite a lot. Roxander was lots of kind of rich buttery burgundy leathers and in JW of course all these amazing wools and this kind of fantastic cheerleader pom-pom that somehow managed to look incredibly expensive even though <laughs> it doesn't sound <laughs> even it. Though it doesn't sound it. Um, yeah so an interesting mix there. I think Jonathan Anderson is really leading the way at uh, at his namesake brand, J.W. Anderson, obviously he also heads up Loewe, so mm. I think he's got that he's got that really lovely job of being able to kind of do the more um, higher-end craft stuff at Loewe and then bring that down into his brand and still and be a bit more experimental and have a bit more kind of frivolous fun. And actually maybe that's what we, we were missing. Actually, you know, people were saying 2020 is going to be like the roaring 20s, but actually it was, wasn't a very frivolous season. People were really honing down yeah and actually as you say that though that there was two people on the schedule who explicitly referenced the 20s which was yeah. Erdem and JW yeah. so that's quite that's like their version but rather than do it as kind of the roaring <laughs> fun 20s it was kind of like tw <laughs> 20s glamour but again in that kind of regal black lipstick thin eyebrows kind of a way um and I suppose even when it's coming from a fun place, such as Erdem, kind of Cecil Beaton playing around in fancy dress, it's still translated as quite, um, quite, quite, I'm not going to say regal, but quite, um, quite posh and quite put together, yeah. which it could have been quite experimental, I think. Um, also, even Burberry, complete um, cutting down of the logos, cutting down of sportswear, much more um, refined, much more kind of sharp work, whereas the suiting was back in like really really strong this season in full force um so i think it's probably a semi-reaction as well as we were saying in the menswear roundup of everyone kind of trying to be do away with trainers i mean in burberry he had literally just dumped not dumped that's really mean <laughs> that's really mean he just plunked a trainer into a kind of brogue base 
And so it's like, how do I modernize this? How do I move away from sportswear? I need to like add something a bit more sartorial onto it. Um, for, you know, some successful, some not. <laughs> um, so I think it's also a little bit of reaction to that as well. I just, yeah, I just think in London you expect so many different ideas and, you know, there's been seasons where we've been pulled apart by one person talking about kind of post-internet truth and the other person, and the next designer's talking about this insane um, myth, Greek mythology legend, whereas actually we didn't have this kind of widespread ideas. They were very focused on the here, the now, the recent history, kind mm -hmm. of, or... Yeah, just there's just kind of what we know already, and not to say that's not what we love, but when London is supposed to be and does have the opportunity to bring you such a wide, vast array of space and experimentation, it is really felt when it's not there. Mm. I will say actually that because um, you are quite right, but there was a few moments of a few, just as we, as you said, experimentation. I just realised that we earlier this afternoon. Richard Malone and Bodhi won kind mm. of experimentation for their sustainability and that was something that really succeeded on this schedule. Experimentation in fabrication, experimentation in chain of chain of creation, how's everything getting from a from starting point A to final point B. Um, and I do think those two really succeeded. Also, um, it, we would be remiss to miss off Matty because he oh, is yes. arguably one of the m most experimental on the schedule. So while it was yeah a real lacking of experimentation overall i think there were a few kind of hidden gems in the rough mm. who are really trying to fight their corner for <laughs> london fashion week yeah and I, I, yeah i just think that if you when you speak to the designers and you know it's almost as if how can we create this kind of these kind of extreme works mm. when you know you have bush fires in australia you know the the world that we're seeing right now can, yeah, it can make you kind of shrink down and focus in on, mm. focus in on the kind of smaller things. It's harder to be uh, light and frivolous. Bold. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So fingers crossed next season will be a little bit bolder, a little bit brighter, everyone feeling a little bit more joy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but still a really beautiful season nonetheless. Um, so thank you guys very much for watching. If you want to watch um, all of our in-depth specific reviews for each of the brands we've mentioned, head to Show Studio now. See you soon.